Tell him we come in peace. We come in peace. No blaze. No blaze. No blaze. Are you okay? and twice as mean. Oh, good. But that's not the worst part. Wonderful. What's the worst part? Killer whales always travel in groups. What? Groups. Oh, no. Big groups. Lots. Oodles and oodles. Hello guys, it's me, Spooky Noodles, and I'm here to review Killer by Peter Tonkin, or Killer by Peter Tonkin. Yeah, I got both of the covers. I believe there's one more probably out there, but I don't know. I'm just going to give one to my dad, and I'm going to keep the other one for myself. Both really cool covers, but I think this one wins in the cover war. Uh... Let me start off by giving you the uh, synopsis on the back, or whatever you want to call it. Um, they were caught in the ultimate trap. They feast the ultimate terror. Faced the ultimate terror. Five men and one beautiful woman marooned on a floating island of Arctic ice. Together they had the equipment and skills to fight off the freezing cold. The violently savage storms. Then suddenly, from the angry seas, the jaws of horror opened wide as nature's deadliest creature rose from the depths. A huge killer whale of enormous intelligence, incredible power, indestructible endurance, ravenous for human prey. Killer. And then it has some quotes from some people, like uh, Lewiston Journal says, Relentless, terrifying, chilling, as good as Jaws. And then Macon? Telegraph News says, Vivid, exciting, a thriller, not for the squeamish. Grand Rapids Press. Woo, go Grand Rapids. Uh, all the best seller ingredients. Uh, Arizona Republic, a whale of a story. Ha! A book of the month club alternate selection. And this was, it doesn't say when it was printed, does it? Nah, but it's a signet. Uh, so that's all I gotta say. I got that one, and then I got this one, and this one is... This one have anything? This one's synopsis is different. Alright, this one's synopsis is... A deadly killer whale 40 feet long and with 56 interlocking, te interlocking teeth escapes from its human masters programmed by the U.S. Navy to thrive on killing man. A plane crash in the savage Arctic stands six research scientists on a drifting ice floe. They are threatened by searing cold, shrieking winds, and blindering or blinding glare. But their greatest danger comes from a marauding pack of killer whales. Suddenly, leader, the leader attacks. The violent death beckoning through its open jaws. And this is by Cornet Books. So, this is the United Kingdom's version. So, this is what the people in Britland get. And this is what we in uh, America get. I believe, if that's correct. Uh, I believe that's correct. 
this is we got the cooler cover this time so yeah just look at that cover you got the group of scientists and one uh, and one co-pilot fighting against the killer whale and yeah I mean, that's what do I have to say about the book it was great it was uh, I give it four stars for sure and I'll get to more of that in a minute so the story begins with our main character Kate she basically follows in her father's footsteps to become a uh, some sort of scientific researcher I'm not really sure uh, anyways uh, she hasn't seen her father in a long time the last time she saw her saw him was when uh hey, do a little puppy Mwah. last time uh he's where was i <laughs> last time uh she saw her father was at her mother's funeral and before that there was a hiatus as well where she went a long time without seeing him so she hasn't had him in her life a lot of the time because he's been doing his job you know he's been doing scientific research things so she grows up wanting to do exactly what he does she follows everything that he does like she buys all his journals all his work that he writes his essays in and stuff like that so she just is taking after her father and one day one of her uh, teachers or whatever you call it or uh, come up to her and say hey look there's they're hiring for a researcher in the field of blah 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 and she goes so I got work to do here and he says you don't understand it's your father it's your father doing this uh, research thing so of course she has to uh, she has to be involved so she uses a pseudonym to go under uh, a pen name if you will or whatever uh, to like fly under the radar so she, uh, she had all the requirements to be picked you know it's just she didn't want her father to pick her just because or like she, she feared that her father wouldn't pick her because it would be dangerous and so therefore she went under the pseudonym of I don't remember the name she goes under this is her name's Kate by the way um I don't remember what she her the name she goes with but uh anyways they meet up at the airport and it's kind of a funny scene where her father's like I'm looking for this woman and she's supposed to be here too it's a surprise to see you but I'm waiting for this one woman she's like no dad you don't understand it's me and there's just a little debacle there and finally she gets through to his thick skull that you know he that she, he's here to meet her so then uh she gets introduced to two other characters well three other characters and those three other characters two of them she met on the plane coming to her father and those two characters are uh Colin Ross Colin Ross I'm I'm not a hundred percent sure how to say Colin. It's either Colin or Colin. Colin Ross and and it, possibly his name's Job. It could be something else. My sister told me I was wrong, and I was like, I don't know. It's spelled J O B, so I'm gonna go with Job. So uh, he's an Eskimo, and like that matters. But that's what he is. He's he's kind of a. Uh, he knows the cold environment very well so that's why uh, it matters I guess um, but anyways she meets a uh, job in uh, Colin Ross then he meets uh, Simon quick and Simon quick is and Colin Ross have beef and later on in the story you learn about the beef you know and it turns out their beef is that uh a long time ago oh by the way this is a spoiler review so if you made it this far and you don't want to know any more I would probably stop where you are at the middle of the video 
Anyways, moving on. Uh, the reason why Simon Quick and Colin Ross have beef is that because... Um, Sorry, I'm trying to remember it clearly to give it to you guys, so I I don't I don't want to mess up. Uh, reason they have beef is <laughs> because um so much going on I can't focus. Ah, okay. Uh, reason why they have beef is because um Simon Quick's brother and uh, Colin Ross or Colin Ross were on an expedition with each other in in the Antarctic and uh something went awry and uh they got stranded in the cold and uh turns out Simon Quick's brother decided to go against orders and tried to make it to the lodge where uh Colin Ross decided to stay put and wait for uh job because job was coming in with a helicopter to save them but they didn't trust Job to get there in time, so they left for the lodge and died. And Colin Ross and uh, I'm just gonna call him Ross. Uh, Ross uh, and his buddy Jeremiah, who happens to be Job's brother, Jeremiah. I know this might get confusing uh, the way I'm telling you this, but uh, Ross tries to save Jeremiah, but he dies, and Ross loses his right arm. And, uh, from Frostbite, I believe. I don't think they really, I think it just assumed it was Frostbite, because it was cold, you know? But anyways, um, he loses his arm, and, uh, Job decides to, you know, to be by his side until the deed is done. Or not deed, uh, his, his tribe believes in a, uh, kind of like a life bond thing, like, uh, like, there's a debt to be owned, o owed, and, uh, his brother owed it, but his brother didn't get to pay it, so Job is paying off the debt, and it ends when one of them die. So Job's by, uh, Ross's side, you know, helping him get his coat off and stuff like that, because he's only got one arm. Even though he's able to shoot a gun pretty well, he's got one arm, so, uh, and I'll get to the gun shooting in a minute. Uh, but anyways, that's why Simon Quick is mad at Ross throughout the whole book. Is because uh, he let this this thing go. And Ross hates himself because his wife was also uh, not a part of the expedition. But his wife was uh, Simon Quick's sister. So... He was married to Simon Quick's sister, and Simon Quick's sister killed herself because she couldn't live with the grief of what happened to Simon or her brother or their brother. So, uh, and it turns out she actually killed herself because uh, Ross wasn't communicating with her, even though he sent letters every day. Uh, Simon would throw those letters away, and, uh, she didn't get any of those letters, so she killed herself, and I, 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 I didn't really get, there wasn't really much talk about why she killed herself, just that she did kill herself, you know, and then there was a lot of fighting and bickering, you know, there's a good scene where, I, I'm getting ahead of myself, um, this book is action-packed, by the way, this has, has drama and adventure and horror everywhere. It's just a, such an entertaining book. And the reason why I read this book is because I saw a quote on a website from a interview with Grady Hendrix, the guy who made Paperbacks from Hell. And uh, he said that uh, if you want a book that's more thrilling than Jaws, you will pick up this book. And I've never read Jaws. I actually have it upstairs in my library. To read um i don't know if that's going to be next or not i also have orca by uh author harzog i think his name is so peter benchley and uh author harzog are two authors i want to read because they got killer whales uh, one has a killer whale story and one has a 
great white shark story, you know, obviously Jaws. So, uh, I plan on reading those books. And then I also have White Shark by Peter Benchley and In the Deep by Peter Benchley. And I'm probably saying his name wrong too, but you know, it's, that's what we do on this channel. We say people's names wrong. Anyways, um, back to what I was saying. So these, this group of people, Job, Ross, uh, Kate, her father, and, uh, Simon, the five of them hop on a plane and with two pilots and they fly and they're going to the little base that they do the, all their scientific research at and something goes wrong and it turns out when they were fueling the plane water leaked into the jets fuel tank and when water leaks into the jets fuel tank the water freezes and then it, the water will block like the water turns into ice and it blocks the fuel from going through the engine. So the plane just sputters and pretty much dies and the plane crashes, killing the pilot and leaving the rest kind of uh, a little, uh, what do you want to call it, bumped up, a little wrecked, not, not really hurt per se. The only one that's really hurt was, uh, well, the pilot who is killed. But he expertly was able to land on a flow of ice, which was really lucky. It's a big flow of ice, but by the time the end of the book, it's like a little tiny room of ice. But I'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, sorry. Um, but uh, they crash. They crash land, and uh, ultimately... They have to string together to survive, and there's a lot of bickering and drama, you know, Kate wants to know, she's trapped with these men, and she doesn't know these men, and Simon has to be stuck with her brothers, his bro his uh, brother's killer, he thinks, even though Ross didn't kill him, he he believes he was left for dead, or blah blah blah, it, it, anyways, um, then and, and Ross and Job have a good friendship going, and stuff like that. But Job is a people's person. Everyone likes Job. Job's the, you know, the book's, uh, what do you want to call it? Uh, everyone loves Job. That's what I'm trying to say. Damn it. <laughs> everyone loves Job. And how could you not love Job is what I'm trying to say. Um, and then you got the pilot now. So you have six people on this flow of ice trapped together. And the co-pilot's name is Haram Preston, I believe. I'm just going to call him Preston, though. Um, so you got Preston now, you got Simon Quick, Ross, Job, and Kate, plus her father. So you got six people on the ice. Now, what happens after that is awesome. I forgot to even tell you what happens in the prologue of the book. The prologue, the prologue is one of the, or no, the prelude, my bad. The prelude is one of the coolest preludes I've read in a while. And basically it made me feel for the whale just for a minute, you know? It made me feel for this killer whale. Like I thought, I, you know, I had to stop reading Cujo because I started getting feels. Like I, the whole book, I felt for the dog as well as I felt for the people trapped in the car, you know? In fact, I might've felt for the dog a little bit more than the people at times. And I don't think Stephen King meant to do that, but I just had trouble finishing because I knew how the book was going to end. The doggy was going to die. So, ah, uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry. For some reason, I got like this back pain going on. And <sighs> Anyways, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> um. Anyways... What was I saying? Um, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, anyways, they're, they're at the beginning of the, the prelude. There, there we go. I remember now. I remember uh, the prelude. The prelude is, um, 
basically this guy is being toured around this research facility and it might be the same research facility they're going to it never really explained nothing much about the research facility is talked about after the prelude but uh the research facility is training dolphins and uh killer whales orcas uh it's training uh norwals it's training all these uh marine life marine mammals whatever i don't know uh to basically kill humans you know and their most famous one is the killer whale obviously so the guy comes and goes sees the killer whale and he the guy explicitly says no i'm spitting all over my keyboard explicitly says do not point your finger at the whale do not raise your arm in any form or way do not do it and the guy's like, yeah, whatever, half paying attention. And then he goes and points at the whale. He goes, oh my god, it's the whale! And the whale, as instructed, comes out of the water and bites the dude's arm off. And then the dude, out of angry reaction, pulls out his gun and shoots at the whale. And the whale doesn't understand what's going on. He's just doing what he's told to do. So he runs away and never is found again. And he, he forms his own pack. Because killer whales hunt in packs, if you didn't... Uh, Watch that intro that I threw up there. Um, they hunt in packs. So that that's a problem later on in the book. But uh, basically, this poor group of scientists and one co-pilot are attacked by these killer whales. That, that one, one killer whale mainly has a hunger for human flesh because it hates humans. It hates them. Hates them. And you, I don't blame it for hating humans, you know? Because humans are pieces of shit sometimes. Especially the human that shot him. And it just did what it was told to do. And it wasn't his fault that, you know, but yeah, it's besides the point. Later on, the killer whale kills an innocent whale. Like, blue whale or whatever the whale is. And then I no longer feel for the whale. <laughs> so, and they, I mean, it's just life, you know. It's just how, what happens, you know. Killer whales hunt and kill things, and that's what they do, you know. So, you can't really blame a whale for killing another whale. Um, but, uh, it made me feel a little less for the whale when that happened, you know. It made me realize, okay, this whale's out for meat. It's out. It's ready to kill. And, it, and then I formed a bond with the characters I was reading about so then I was like worried for their sake and by the end of the story I thought everyone was going to die I didn't think this was going to have any survivors at all <laughs> like I'll tell you who uh this is a spoiler review again so I'll tell you who dies um all right let's start off with the first kill all right so Preston, the co-pilot, after this huge attack happens and they they throw dynamite on a raft and push the raft out into the water and the raft explodes and they think, oh, that scared away the killer whales. So they're like, okay, so um, Preston takes a fishing rod and goes fishing in the water for fish, obviously. Well, what else would you fish for, I guess? And uh, what he gets is a killer whale. Killer whale pops out of the water and brings them down into the water. And they, they, Ross and Simon come over and Job, they all come over and grab him by the legs and start pulling him up. And when they pull him up, his torso's gone. Like, all they do is pull up his legs from the waist down. <laughs> and then Kate comes over and sees the whole thing and screams and stuff like that. And that's your first death. Second death was, uh, it, it goes on a while without a death. Uh, but the second death, well, third, I guess, if you count the pilot's death, which you do. So third death would be, uh, Kate's dad. Her dad gets killed by, a uh, killer whale, obviously. Um... He actually almost died earlier in the book when he fell into the water and passed out. The thing about falling in the Arctic water, or not Arctic water, this is off the, like, in the middle between Alaska and Russia is where they are, where they crash landed. 
I believe. So, uh, yeah, and that's where they crash landed. And, uh, where was I going with that? <laughs> I need to take my medicine, y'all. Um, oh yeah, he almost passes out. He passes out, actually, because the water's so cold, guys. It's so cold. So, anyways, um, he eventually, um, he eventually, uh, goes off with Simon to do something. I forget what they're going to do. And, uh, his dumbass, like, oh, there's something interesting in the ice. I must, I must collect it. Because he's a scientist and he does... He's bored out of his mind, and he wants to do something scientific. So he's, like, scraping at this red gunk on the side of the uh, ice and says this must be a really scientific, re like, science must be a huge scientific find, and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know where this killer whale pops out of the water and eats him. Um, so then later on, you know, Simon's freaking out, you know. Uh... And then Ross and Simon have a fight in the tent about, uh, you know, because uh, uh, Simon finally tells Ross that he he, he grabbed his, the letters that he sent to his wife and threw them into the garbage and they got into a fight. And when that happens, a whale comes out of the ice because it hears the commotion and knows exactly where they are. So it bursts out of the ice. And no one dies, but it's a shock for sure. I thought I thought someone was gonna die, and uh, and uh, yeah, um, no one died there. But uh, later on, my favorite character dies. Job, god damn it, Job died. So what happens is uh, there's a big commotion the ice is breaking the killer whales are jumping out there's a bunch of them so you know there's three of them at this point a pack left a little while ago and two killer whales stayed with the leader and then later on the pack will come back but uh because it hears its leader crying out and help needs help but uh that's later on in the story um but anyways the ice is cracking and uh job slowly his little flow he's on slowly goes into the water and he starts going like something knots. I don't remember how many, how fast he was going away from them, but they couldn't get to him anymore. And and he has the dynamite, which is very, very, uh, wow, the words just escaped me, but, uh, Inconvenient. <laughs> there we go. It was very inconvenient. And, uh... Yeah. Uh... That death made me feel. Because I was like, no, Job! Uh, Job basically... Uh, the ki killer whale pops out of the water and grabs his arm. Is it his arm? Yeah. And all oh, the detail of how his skin and muscle just peel off and you can see white yellowish bone underneath and it's like oh you know and then uh while one killer whale is holding him down the other killer whale comes out of the water to you know eat the rest of him and job lights a piece of dynamite and explodes and kills one of the killer whales and hurts the other one and kills himself also and it goes into detail how the one killer whale that survived has bone shattered, bone fragments stuck in its skull from both his mate and from Job. And I was like, grossed out. I was like, ugh. And then, uh, then you have Simon, Ross, and, uh, Kate left. And, uh... I'm not, you know, from here on out, I'm not gonna give anything away because I do want y'all to read these books this this book you know it is a great 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 book for sure and uh i'm not gonna ruin the ending even though this is a spoiler review i'm not gonna review the review the ending so but just know that it is shocking all the way till the end <laughs>
So it's a must read, and if I were you, I would go buy this book. It's four stars for me. So yeah, this has been a Spooky Noodles review, and I hope you enjoyed. So uh, bye bye